Hi folks, welcome to today's tutorial. We'll be looking at some more challenging surds or harder surds. This has been a request from Daniel Green. I hope this helps you, bud. But I'm certain whoever watches this, it should help you too. Just before I start, there's something I want to quickly show you. Just hold on. Now this is my home broken controller. Just wanted to show you what happens when you don't have a mathematician on board. All of you people, when you're doing trigonometry and bearing, say it's a waste of time. Well, I think obviously the captain did as well because he obviously didn't know uh, which way he was going. So he could have certainly used some bearings help there. But anyway, let's get back to our surds. Okay, so my surds work. So I'm going to do about four or five questions. The first question is going to be um, an easy one, I guess, of this sort. We're going to be looking at fractions, where we're doing adding and subtracting. Just remember, if any of this is a bit beyond you, if you're looking at this and you're wanting to do some normal third work, there are plenty of uh, tutorials that I've made there on third, so it's a good idea to go back and just double check those. Okay, so as I said, this is a really straight, relatively straightforward one. Okay, whenever you look at adding fractions, I like to have a look at things like a half plus a third because the same principles will apply. Whenever you're having um, adding fractions, you need to make sure that those denominators there are the same. It's the only way you can add or subtract. So in order to make that a 6, we multiply the bottom by 3 and the top by 3. So it makes it 3 over 6. Bottom by 2 and top by 2 it makes it 2 over 6 which gives me the answer of 5 over 6. Making sure that, again, you need to have a common denominator, and if all else fails, just multiply the two bottoms together, which gives you that common denominator. So that same principle will apply for this particular question, although we're using thirds, it looks more challenging. I'm going to put brackets around there because it's going to make things easier. So common denominator, I said if all else fails, you times the two bottoms together. So I'm going to do root 2 plus 1 times root 2 minus 1. And what you might notice when I do that that's actually creating, for this particular question, a difference of two squares. But in order to times the bottom by root 2 minus 1, I need to times the top by root 2 minus 1. Likewise, I'm going to multiply this side by root 2 plus 1, times the top by root 2 plus 1. I like to put brackets around, because often it reminds me to multiply whatever's inside the brackets by, so outside the brackets by, both things that are inside. Let's simplify. 1 times root 2 is simply just root 2. 1 times negative 1, is simply just negative 1. Plus 2 times root 2 is 2 root 2 and 2 times positive 1 is just 2. And remember it's all over the same common denominator which is root 2 plus 1 and root 2 minus 1. You could if you wish at that stage if you recognize straight away that that's a difference of two squares you could actually expand that out if you wish there. If not it's okay. Alright now let's have a look. We've got a root 2 plus 2 root 2. So that's going to now create 3 root 2. So 1 root 2 plus 2 root 2 is 3 root 2. And then negative 1 plus 2, or well 2 minus 1 is 1. And then all over. Now, this is where I need to simplify. Square root 2, we get 2. Difference to squares, we've got a minus. 1 squared is 1. So equals 3 root 2 plus 1 all over 1 but I don't need to put the 1 there, okay? It's just my answer is 3 root 2 plus 1. Okay, that was the first question. The next question we're going to start on, question number 2. It's going to be a little more challenging now. And often with these questions, folks, you really need to have quite a lot of working space as well. So often you'll be you know, doing even a page of working for just one question. So it's really important to have nice, neat uh, work because otherwise you can really get messed up about where you're at and that's sometimes going to be half the problem. Okay, so I'm just writing that question out there. So it's another um, subtraction question, but you'll notice this time um, that the bottom parts, the denominator, are not the same, so it's not going to be a nice um, nice uh, difference of two squares question. But however, the same principles apply. I'm going to put brackets around them. Remember the half plus a third? In order to get a common denominator, we're going to times these two things together. So I'm going to times this by... 3 root 2 minus the root 5 times the top by uh, 3 root 2 minus root 5. Likewise, this side, I'm going to times it by, I'm going to over on there, um, we've got root 5 plus root 2 times the top by root 5 plus root 2. Exactly like we did the last question. Now, the next step, we're going to expand the brackets. 1 times 3 root 2 is just 3 root 2. 1 times negative root 5 is just negative root 5 plus 
3 times root 5 is just 3 root 5. And 3 times root 2 is just 3 root 2. It's all over the common denominator. This time, however, I'm going to start expanding the, the denominator now. Because I know that's my common denominator, denominator there. So root 5 times 3 root 2 makes 3 root 10. Okay, because 5 times 2 is 10. Minus root 5 times root 5 is just 5. Then root 2 times 3 root 2. Well, root 2 times root 2 is just positive 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. So I get plus 6. And then root 2 times negative root 5 is negative root 10. Just with that step there, we're doing root 2 times 3 root 2. Remember, the root 2 times root 2 is root 4 times 3. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 3 equals 6. That's just where that, that 6 there came from. Just wanted to make sure of that. Now, the next line I'm going to simplify. Okay, I've got 3 root 2's here, and I'm adding 3 root 2's here, which gives me 6 root 2's. Minus root 5 plus 3 root 5. Well, I've got 3 of them. I'm taking one away. I means I've got 2 of them. All over, once again, I'm going to simplify. 3 root 10 minus 1 root 10 is 2 root 10. And then 6 minus 5 is 1. Okay. Now, you would most likely think, oh, I have to stop there. I can't do it any further. And that's true for the most part. However, we have an irrational number, that root 10, as a denominator. We don't want that. So we're going to now rationalize it like we were doing before in one of the previous lessons by times it by 2 root 10 minus 1 and then 2 root 10 minus 1. The reason, again, we do that is because now what happens here when we multiply these together, that creates a difference of two squares where the middle two terms when we expand out the long way would disappear. Okay, so now let's expand. Now I'm going to put the brackets around here again as well. It helps me remember here I'm going to be timesing four things together, which again is going to be quite a lot of work. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to... Oh, I don't have enough room there. It's going to be a pain. Okay. So I'm going to try to squeeze it into the right-hand side. 6 times 2 is 12. So I've done that one. And then root 10 times root 2 is root 20. <laughs> then times this one, minus 6 root 2. Now let's do this one. 2 times 2 is 4, so plus 4. And then root 5 times root 10 is root 50. And then 2 root 5 times negative 1 is negative 2 root 5. I think I've just squeezed it on. My difference of 2 squares, will, if I do 2 root 10 times 2 root 10, well, 4, so 2 times 2 is 4. Root 10 times root 10 is 10. So 4 times 10 is 40. And then a difference of 2 squares, 1 times 1 is 1. So obviously that's going to be 39. Equals. Let's simplify. Now, here you look at this, you've got root 20, root 2, root 50, and root 5. You would think we can't simplify any further there. However, what we can do, we can simplify the root 20 and the root 50. So just above here, I'm just going to do this above. This means 12 times root 20. Now, root 20 is 4 and 5. So root 4 is 2, so that's 2 root 5. And then... 4 root 50 is 4 times, or well, root 50 can be 25 and 5, so 25 and 2, so it would be 5 root 2. That's a simplifying, again, if that's a bit sort of mystifying, go back to have a look at the lessons of, of simplifying. Now, I'm going to rewrite this whole line. So, 12 times 2 is 24 root 5, minus the 6 root 2. Now, plus 4 root 50, we just did up here. So 4 times 5 is 20, so it's 20 root 2. And then minus 2 root 5. All over 39. But now, I can simplify a little bit more. <laughs> this is a long, nice, long question. We've got um, 24 lots of root 5 minus 2 root 5. We'll make it 22 root 5. And then we get minus 6 root 2 plus 20 root 2. Well, 20 minus 6 is 14 root 2. And all over 39. 
Now, nothing can be divided into that because it's only, I think, three is pretty much the only one that can go into there, three and 12, and that's pretty much about it. So that's my final answer. What a tough question. Okay, let's have a look at question number three. Okay, so question number three. Now, this is going to be a multiplication question. Okay, multiplication question. So I'm going to put brackets around here. I'm going to put brackets around here. It's actually much easier than the last one because you don't need to make the denominators the same. Once again, I like to look at the half times a third this time. Remember, when we multiply fractions, we just times the tops and times the bottoms together. Okay, so once again, the principle um, of that uh, of, of fractions will apply. So I'm going to do root 2 times root 2, which is just 2. And root 7 times root 2 is negative root 14. Nice and easy, that first bit. This bit's going to be a bit more time consuming, because I'm doing root 2 times 2 root 3. Well, that will make 2 root 6. Root 2 times positive root 2, well, that's just 2. Then root 3 times 2 root 3, well that's a more, more challenging because root 3 times root 3 is just 3. And we need to times that by 2 to make 6. And then root 3 times root 2 is root 6. Okay, so I've got 2 minus root 14 at the top there, still. I can simplify it because 2 root 2 plus root 6, so 2 root 6 plus root 6 is 3 root 6. And then 2 plus 6 is 8. A bit more simple, however. The bottom is currently still a third, so it's not rational, so it's not simplified. So now, now I need to rationalize this. So we're going to have, it's up here, we have 2 minus root 14 over 3 root 6 plus 8. That was just what we've got. We're going to multiply that by 3 root 6 minus 8 over 3 root 6 minus 8. Once again, we've done that, so we've created a difference of two squares on the bottom. And that will hopefully simplify out. Let's multiply the top parts. 2 times 3 root 6, or 2 3 is a 6 root 6. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. Negative root 14 times um, root 6, so that's a bit more challenging, isn't it? So that's going to be um, a negative uh, 3 root 84. I think that's right. And then negative root 14 times so negative root, so negative 8, is a positive 8 root 14. All over. Now I'll expand the bottom part. So we square the first, we square the last, and it's a difference of two squares, so it's a minus. So 3 times 3 is 9. Root 6 times root 6 is 6. So 9 times 6 is 54. Difference of two squares. And then 8 times 8 is 64. Okay, so let's have a look. I've got a root 6 here. I've got a root 84. Now, root 84, that might be able to be sorted down a little bit further. Um, 84 can be broken down to, um, so 3 root 84, 3 root 21 times root 4. So I just divided it by 4, because that was a nice number. So root 4 is 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. That's 6 root 21. So we're going to have 6 root 6 minus 16 minus 6 root 21 plus 8 root 14 all over. Now 54 take away 64 is obviously going to be negative 10. All right, so we're nearly there. I know it's a hard question again. Now 6... 21 and 14, neither of those can be broken down any further. So that's going to be my my uh, my top part. But they don't often like having a negative on the bottom here. Okay, that's on I can be a problem. So what they do, they, instead of writing it there, they put it up the top. But remember, that works on everything up the top there. So actually what's going to happen, it's going to change the sign of everything when you put it, if we take the brackets out. So it's going to be negative 6 root 6 positive 16, positive 6 root 21, and then negative 8 root 14, all over 10. And sorry guys, just before I, um, I move on, just realized something too. A number that goes into 10, 6, 16, 6, and 8. So it's all pluses, it has to go into all those numbers, those whole numbers, 
that number is going to be 2. So 2 goes into 10 5 times, 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 16 8 times, 2 goes into 6 3 times, and 2 goes into 8 4 times. So, in saying that, my final answer is going to be um, negative 3 root 6 plus 8 plus 3 root 21 minus 4 root 14 all over 5. That's certainly a long question. Okay, and I'm probably going to just do one last question. Okay, one last question. Okay, question number four. Now, this might look much like a lot different and really difficult, but actually, there's only one step that's, that's sort of different. This is a substitution question. They're giving you the value of t, which obviously has got a third into it. And all we need to do is substitute that root 3 minus 2 with a t. So, I'm going to put it for the first t. I'm going to get root 3 minus 2 plus 1 over root 3 minus 2. Now, remember when we're adding fractions, we want to make sure that the denominator is the same. That's always over 1. Okay, so we need to make sure, like we did before, that we can times these two together. So I'm going to times this by root 3 minus 2, times the top, now I'm going to put those in brackets, root 3 minus 2. Now I'm going to times this by 1, but if I do that, it's just going to be the same, isn't it? So you don't really have to times that by anything. Okay, so equals. Now, root 3 times root uh, root 3. Sorry, that should be root 3, shouldn't it? Root 3 times root 3 is just 3. Root 3 times negative 2 is negative 2 root 3. Negative 2 times root 3 is negative 2 root 3. And negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And what you may have realized, that that was actually a, diff, uh, not a perfect square, where you could have squared the first, which is 3, Square the last, which is 4, times them together, which is negative 2 root 3, and doubled it, which is negative 4 root 3. But, hey, it's okay. And I'll chuck plus 1 at the end, because that's the top part. And then I've got root 3 minus 2 on the bottom part. Okay, now it comes to the simplifying spot. Alright, I might do this in yellow. So I've got the number 3, whole number. 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 1 is 8. Then I've got minus 2 root 3, minus 2 root 3 is minus 4 root 3. You might already have that, because if you did the perfect square. Over root 3 minus 2. Now once again, you might think, yep, I'm done, I'm finished. But lo and behold, we're not simplified. We have an irrational number as a denominator. So let's times this by through root 3 plus 2 over root 3 plus 2 in order to get rid of that denominator that is an irrational number. Okay. So, I'm going to chuck some brackets around here, just so it makes it easier when I'm doing my multiplication. So, if I expand the first one, 8 times root 3 is just 8 root 3. 8 times 2 is 16. Minus 4 root 3 times root 3, well, that's going to be minus 4. Three, root 3 times root 3 is just 3, so 4 3 is a 12. And then negative 4 root 3 times positive 2 is minus 8 root 3. All over. Square the first, which is 3. So the difference is 2 squares. Square the last, which is 4. So I'm going to go down and down and down. Remember, you can rewind this if, if, if needs be. I've got 8 root 3s minus 8 root 3s. They cancel each other out. So I've got 16 minus 12, which is 4, over... 3 take away 4 is negative 1, which is going to equal negative 4 over positive 1, or just negative 4. It comes out to be like a really nice answer. Okay, surprise, surprise. Now look, I just came out to 20 minutes. I'm going to stop there. Some really tough questions. Just have a look through your textbook. Um, look, it's just, a, it's just a matter of working through these, and I know it's a little pain. Um, but as you can see, if you get it out, it's um, the best thing in the world. So look, I hopefully you enjoyed it, um, got something out of it. Keep doing more questions, any more problems, just ask me and um, yeah, I'll try to help you out. Have fun.